Hey, welcome back to the channel. So well over a year ago, I did an experiment with an iPad Pro trying to see if I could use that as a laptop replacement. I did a whole video series on this. I'll put a link up here if you want to check it out. But little spoiler alert, that experiment failed and I could not do it. And it was all related to the software, nothing wrong with the hardware. Skip forward to 2019, Apple announces iOS 13 and iPad OS, which is a tweaked version of iOS specifically for the iPad. Now that's still in very, very early beta right now, but I took the chance and loaded it on my 2018 iPad. And with that result, this video is to talk about how iPad OS fixed the iPad and made it a viable laptop alternative. So my biggest pet peeve, and I think the biggest pet peeve of a lot of people was the file management or lack thereof on the iPad. Um, it just completely broke the experience for me. And this was the biggest thing that kept me from being able to use it as a laptop. Now I do some video editing on my iPad. I used LumaFusion. It worked great when I did the first experiment. It still works great now. It works even better. They came out with version 2.0. It's fantastic. They don't sponsor this in any way, but you got to check out LumaFusion if you do any kind of video editing on your iPad. But all that aside, when I do my video editing, I like to load things in on the fly. I like to go out to the internet and download music. And I couldn't do that with the previous version. You couldn't download stuff from the internet and save it to a download folder and then load it into your application. It just wasn't possible. But now with iPad OS, they have desktop class browsing in Safari, which includes download management. So you can download files from SoundCloud or whatever you use and it actually saves it to a download folder, which you can then go into the files app, go into that download folder, and then just move it to wherever you need to for the application that you're working on. It works great. It is such a game changer that it's unbelievable. And the next thing that's in that same category is the new ability to use external drives and thumb drives. You mount the drive, it shows up as an external drive just as it always should. You can navigate it from the files app again, move files out of there, copy files into it. It works great and it works the way you would expect it to work now. Now, the last thing on the file management is I have a network storage that I keep a lot of my files on, especially a lot of my templates and stuff like that. And I would always have to copy those down, load them onto the, the iPad and preload them. But now I can connect directly to a Samba drive, which is basically just a Windows share, copy all my files to and from my network location, just like I do on my desktop. And uh, I have them on my iPad and I can move them into LumaFusion or wherever I need them. It works great. The file management is just a, a huge improvement with iPad OS. And I'll get into some more stuff, but this is the biggest thing that fixed iOS for me on the iPad. Next thing I wanted to talk about was a lack of mouse support. And I know a lot of people are going to say this is impractical and I totally get it. You have the touch screen, you have the Apple pencil, you know, why do you need a mouse? But for me, if I'm using this as a actual laptop replacement, I need that mouse. That's the way I'm used to working. The touch screen works great. The Apple pencil works great, but I was just missing that mouse. Now in iPad OS, it's in there. It's kind of buried. You have to go into the accessibility features and it has this big old giant cursor, but it's there. You can pair up a Bluetooth mouse. You can use the, the cursor to navigate around just like you would expect to, especially when you're browsing the web, it feels like just like you're on a desktop. It works really well. I, I'm hoping they refine it a little bit. I know the intention is not to use it as a mouse. It's an accessibility feature, but I'm hoping they refine it and let you, uh, you know, change the, the mouse pointer and things like that down the road. But for right now, again, that is just a huge thing. This is not necessarily a critical thing. I could have lived without it, but just the fact that they added it in there is a really, really nice touch. Now, last thing I wanted to talk about was the reduced functionality of game pads that you could use with iOS. Now you could go out and get an MFI compatible game pad and pair that up with your iOS device and it would work for the most part, but clicking in on the left stick and clicking in on the right stick that functionality wasn't there and I don't know why that wasn't there. And now this is used a lot in like first person shooters and stuff where you'll click in on the left stick to run and that functionality just wasn't available. So you would have to try to remap it and it was a big pain in the butt. It wasn't, wasn't really a good experience, but now with iPad OS and I think on iOS 13 as well, they added support for Bluetooth controllers. So you can 
pair up your Xbox One controller, your PS4 controller, or like in my case, I paired up my Steam controller, paired it up through Bluetooth, it worked just fine, all the functionality was recognized, including clicking in on the thumbstick. I used the Steam Link app in the App Store, connected out to my gaming rig, streamed a bunch of stuff over, and everything worked great. It was just as if I was sitting at my gaming rig using this controller, uh, even the profiles in Steam were recognized, so it passed through that I was using the Steam controller, which is fantastic. Now, again, this wasn't really a deal breaker for me, but it just is really nice because it, to me, it really shows that Apple is listening to us and giving us what we're asking for. So those are my ways that iPad OS fixed the iPad and made it a viable laptop alternative. I have been using this since I loaded iPad OS on there. Been using it for about two weeks as my laptop replacement and I haven't missed having a laptop. I've been able to do all my office work, all my YouTube research. I've even been able to do some video editing with LumaFusion and everything has worked great. The fact that I can download files and connect out to network drives is so huge. I can't even put it into words how much of a game changer that is if you're using that kind of functionality. If you haven't tried it out, again, it is in beta. I personally have not had any major issues. I have had to try reset my iPad a few times and it seems like the, the wireless kind of drops out a little bit. So you may want to wait until later in the year, in the fall, when they release the official version. So hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you have any questions or comments on anything I've talked about, put it down in the comment section. I try to answer all my comments. If you did find it useful and informative, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.